Hey, what's up guys? John here. $17 trillion in assets is what the middle class holds right now. And there's a bunch of different things that are happening right now, which conveniently allows the 1% and the top 5% to accumulate a large block of that $17 trillion pool of liquidity and assets held by the middle class. The top 1% of Americans officially own a greater share of the country's wealth than the middle class. Now I'm going to show you some pretty shocking shocking things that are unfolding right now. And I'm going to tell you what the top CEO of the largest bank in the world is saying is about to happen to interest rates. The head of the country's biggest bank sounding the alarm that inflation could soar past 8%. Be prepared for higher rates. If you have credit card debt, if you have a home equity line of credit, an auto loan, you have any debt at all, pay very, very close attention to what's going to happen. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you the facts. I'm going to show you what's going to happen with inflation. And this is all, you know, factual. This isn't, you know, an opinion that I might have. This is what they are saying is going to happen. I'm going to break it down uh, to help you and position you, so you know you don't get taken advantage of. Because I believe a lot of people, especially the next couple of years, are going to get basically, you know, looted, looted financially due to all of these new, you know, protections, all these new things that are coming um, that you know they're going to act like they didn't see coming. Please, right? I'm gonna break it down. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate other people about what's going on. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any issue at all in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow. Take a look at this. So 10-year treasury is, this is year to date, year to date is going up. And so what does this mean? Well, it means, and it suggests that higher borrowing costs potentially slowing economic growth. So higher borrowing costs right now, they're saying that Fed funds rate as of April 8th is about 5.33%. And Jamie Dimon was saying that he could see a scenario where it would go to 6%, right? That was on the 8th. Then he came out the next day saying that interest rates could actually go to 8%. And this isn't, you know, 30 year fixed rate interest rate. This is the Fed funds interest rate. Now, if this goes to 8%, what this would mean is that 30 year fixed rate mortgages for people, you know, for the average person might be 11%. And so right now on a 30 year, on a 30 year mortgage, you're looking somewhere around right here. You're looking somewhere around 8%. 8% if you have the average credit score in America is a 698, right? So if you have perfect credit, you're at 7.391%, 800 credit score and above. So if Fed funds goes like what Jamie Dimon is suggesting, you can imagine what that will do to a buyer's purchasing power and what that will do to a lot of people's equity in their homes. Now, many people go on Zillow and they look at the assessment of their property and say, you know what? My home price isn't moving. Market's really strong, market's really solid. Look, if interest rates go from 3% to 11%, 3% to 8, 9%, the buyer's purchasing power greatly changes. And so with it, the value and equity of that property changes. The Zestimate, I believe, is a false indicator of one's real value of their property in many cases. Now, look at what's happened, for example. In 2020, 2021, you know, interest rates are very low. You could, you know, this would be a 30, this would be a uh, credit card interest rate on a traditional credit card, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, somewhere around, you know, 14 to 15% was the traditional APR. Now, if you have a $10,000 balance with a 15% interest rate, you're looking at a $4,200 payment for interest over a five year cycle. Now, based on the increase in interest rates, the Fed funds rate, now, according to Forbes, interest rate is 27.90 as the average credit card interest rate, 27.90. So what this actually does to people with credit card debt is this 27.90, the same monthly payment, $240, same credit card balance, 10,000. It will go from five years to $4,200 to 12 years. So the same borrower is going to make payments for an extra seven years. And rather than paying 4,000, they're going to pay 26,000. So it was essentially a theft of $22,000 for people that have credit card debt with a $10,000 balance, right? It's massive, like it's, it's absolutely massive. This does not take into consideration what's unfolded right now with inflation. Inflation now is costing the average, you know, Americans need to make an extra, call it $1,000 a month, $11,400 a year, just to afford the basics. So Americans are $1,000 per month poorer, almost. And then in what's going on with interest rates right now with credit cards. And then you look at what's happening right now with defaults on credit cards across the, across the nation. You're looking at 15 to 20, 25, even some states almost 40, 39% here. You have to ask yourself, 
what is very likely going to happen next? Well, what I believe is going to happen next is people are going to start throwing in the towel. They're going to say, you know what? Forget it. I'm not paying twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars worth of interest because if well, I mean, the average American has sixty-eight hundred dollars in credit card debt. This is ten thousand dollars, not you know far above the average. A lot of people have twenty thousand, right? If you have twenty thousand and you let's say increase the monthly to three fifty, which is you know it's a lot of money. Look, you'd still you'd have to make a monthly payment of four hundred sixty-five dollars a month. So let's just say five hundred dollars a month. What would this mean? It would take almost a decade to get out of uh, credit card debt, almost forty thousand dollars in interest, right? So I believe what we're going to start to see here is inflation likely get worse. And this isn't my opinion. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share this with you. So remember, two years ago they said you want to marry the house and date the rate. Everyone was saying that. I was saying on this channel that was a horrible, horrible idea, because odds are interest rates are not going to be going down anytime soon. In fact, data suggests the opposite. That rates are going to be going up, and now when we look at what's unfolding here, it, it's interesting. So we're we're going to see a big rug pull in the housing market. Look at the home equity line of credit, the search trajectory on Google Trends. It's going through the roof. People are desperately looking for lines of credit and access to money. Traditional home equity line of credit, you might get an introductory offer for two years, you know, where it's you know three percent, four percent, five percent, and then after that it will adjust to market. A lot of people to taking out home equity lines of credit. You know, in 2022, and they're now in a place where they're going to have to, you know, pay significantly more to service that debt. A lot of people, I think, this could put them in a lot of uh, a lot of danger uh, financially. Now, as this is all unfolding, what Jamie Dimon suggested here is it goes in it goes in line perfectly with what I believe is going to happen. He says in his annual letter to shareholders, Mr. Diamond said that the bank was ready for a very broad range of rates from 2% to 8% or even higher potentially pushed up because of high government spending and the need to curb prices, rising prices. Mr. Diamond comments come as US interest rates rest at the range between 5.25 and 5.5% higher than they've been for more than 20 years. By making borrowing more expensive, higher interest rates encourage saving and reduce borrowing for home purchases and business investments, cooling the economy and easing pressures of pushing up prices. Mr. Diamond has long warned that investors may be overly confident in their bets of interest rates will rapidly fall back to lower levels. Last year, he suggested rates could hit 7%. All of the following factors appear to be inflationary, ongoing fiscal spending, remiliation of the world, structuring of global trade, capital, needs of new green economy. And this is the green economy that I'm talking about right here. Look at this. So, and I mean, this is, this is a uh, signal is really where we're going. Panama Canal, for example, completely shut down, they say, because of climate. Uh, because of what's going on with the climate, they're shutting down the Panama Canal or shutting down uh, large, large uh, volumes of traffic through the Panama Canal. You look at what's happening with the Red Sea, it's 66% decline in the Suez Canal. Then you look at you know, Baltimore Bridge, right? All the disruption that's unfolding here, all this inf is inflation. It's going to get passed on to American consumers. Now, what they said, and then you also look at all these variables that are going to impact the treasury market, for example, America seizing $300 billion worth of Russian assets that they say they're going to be using to help support Ukraine, right? So what's going to be very fascinating here, and that's, by the way, Suez Canal is responsible for 12% of global trade. Panama Canal is 5%, right? 17% just right there in, in global trade. Now, what the Atlantic Council, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, what they've all said over the last, call it, 90 days, 100 days, Atlantic Council drought a disrupted future of global trade, meaning prices are likely going to be going up, right? If trade is disrupted, what does that mean? It means that there's going to be dollars chasing a smaller amount of goods and services, meaning prices are going to go up. Jerome Powell said he's only going to decrease interest rates if prices go down. Then you have IMF saying, as the chart of the week shows, ports of Panama, Nicaragua, Ecuador, Peru, El Salvador, Jamaica are suffering the most in these days. Global trade is nearly flatlined. Populism is taking pole, right? It would have declined outright from the growth. Trade and services, trade and goods shrank roughly 2%. And they're going to say that this is going to continue because of what's unfolding right here, right? So what all this signals to me is that we're going to see a lot more pressure and weight on banks because banks are holding a lot of commercial real estate. You know, local regional banks, they're holding 70% of all commercial real estate debt. Right? So as interest rates rise, 
as insurance rises, as the work from home trend continues to become more obvious for many companies because they're gonna have a harder time getting access to liquidity as well. They're gonna need to cut expenses. All of this is gonna put more weight on regional banks. And, uh, and as this is all unfolding, American consumers are in more trouble than ever. There are more debt than they've ever been in. So what, what do I think is gonna happen? More defaults across the board for everyday American consumers. If you have credit card debt, if you have any type of adjustable rate debt, you know, a personal debt, you should really look into 0% APR balance transfer credit cards. Find ways to get out of debt with zero interest, if at all possible. And, you know, yeah, obviously you need a credit score around 700, 730, 740 uh, in most cases. But put yourself in a position to fix your situation if you have high interest rate credit card debt or any type of debt for that matter. Because inflation, I believe, is going to continue to trickle through to the U.S. economy. It's going to impact you know, the 95% the most. And this is gonna be a big opportunity for the 1%, the top 5% to go out there and start buying up assets. That's what's gonna happen. As borrowing costs go up, purchasing power for, you know, everybody basically goes down and with it, asset values. So I think we're gonna walk into a really, really big opportunity to invest. For those that have, you know, the cash and liquidity to do so. I mean, look at this, for example. Where have all the foreign buyers gone for US Treasury debt? So we need to sell. We need to sell, look at this. The bottom line is that someone will need to buy more than 10 trillion in US government bonds in 2024. That is more than one third of US government debt outstanding and more than one third of US GDP. Repeat that trend every year for the foreseeable future. It's almost 11 trillion every year for the next five and a half years. So do you, if you were another country, would you wanna buy our debt with the yields in which we're paying on our T-bills? Probably not, right? You probably wouldn't. Rates are gonna be forced up so put yourself in a strong cash position, put yourself in a position either with a strong business that you own or you're working with. You know, maybe as an employee, maybe as you know, you have some type of role with a business that has a really good future and that you have a, you know, a strong position there. You, you really wanna put yourself in the best position possible because I think we're gonna see a lot of volatility in the job market. It's gonna ripple throughout the entire US economy. I'm curious, what do you think? Where do you see all this going? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section below. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we would love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any issue at all in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow, for Friday. And uh, catch you next video.